Hey everyone, I'm here at, on the plaza in downtown Santa Fe on East Palace Avenue at the grand opening of the new gallery Fire God, which is Native American owned and features a variety of Native American contemporary artists, young artists, um, very cool art. So let's go inside and uh, see what we can find. So I'm here with Sylvester Justito, who is the owner of Fire God Gallery here on the plaza in Santa Fe. And this is your opening night. Congratulations. So tell me a little bit about the gallery. What, um, what do you hope to achieve with this gallery? And tell me a little bit about what people will see when they come here. Well, the gallery is uh, mainly focused on uh, contemporary art. Uh, uh, what you would expect from this gallery is uh, cutting edge contemporary art uh, by Native Americans or inspired uh, uh, Native American art. Uh, we have everything from sculpture to paintings to uh, jewelry, and uh, pretty soon we're going to have some clay art. Um, and basically, the mission for the gallery is to uh, um, keep a place for Native Americans to come to, uh, to show their contemporary art, uh, because there's hardly a venue right now for, for us, and uh, uh, this is a good place because uh, it's uh, uh, a vision from a Native American's point of view, and um, um, this is basically my vision for a gallery that I would visit every day. Now, are there very many galleries here in Santa Fe that are Native-owned? Uh, there's a couple. Uh, the Domingo family, a gallery. Um, I see that you have a piece here by Les. Yes. Uh, which is very, very cool. Lucky. Yeah, we're very lucky to have a piece by Na uh, Les. He uh, wants to concentrate on paintings, but uh, uh, so he's uh, been uh, uh, really excited to show a piece actually a title to Fire God uh, for now. So we're That's really excited about that. And you're from the Zuni tribe, is that right? Yes, I'm from the Zuni tribe. Uh, uh, but also, I've, I've traveled all over the world. I've lived in New York. Uh, San Francisco, so I think this is uh, a little bit of everything from my travels, so I learned. Hello, Doug Coffin here. Uh, I'm appearing in front of one of my sculptures here, for a grand opening in Santa Fe. One of my sculptures, uh, uh, Sun, Moon, Shaman, which is male, female energy. You can see the snake here, uh, which... Uh, deals with the uh, bringing of knowledge in the Kenya world, uh, especially the Hopis, to uh, knowledge uh, to mankind from the underworld. I did the marble granite piece here, the seven, which in front of my studio, I've got a 12-foot piece. Okay. A lot of my pieces are 30, 40 feet tall, steel. Let's, let's talk a little bit about Chris Pepin's work. Um, he is he's sort of working in the the tradition of the the ledger art. Mm -hmm. And can you talk a little bit about his inspiration, his background, and that sort of thing? Well, uh, he uh, actually called. Uh, well, he answered uh, a call to artist uh, ad, and um, when he sent he sent me the uh, the first few photographs, I already knew his work, and um, I, I really had uh, was excited about it because uh, ledger art. For, for a while went into uh, a very cartoony uh, kind of uh, uh, horses, you know, paintings on horses, uh, and um, I didn't know, I didn't really uh, understand that, but when he showed me these pieces, I was totally blown away. Very edgy. Um, yeah, ex exactly. He really added that extra uh, um, uh, energy to our, our gallery that we, we needed, um, and I'm really excited to show his work. And, and to get to know more about him and, and uh, where he's coming from. Michael Billy, he, you know, kind of 
incorporates sort of a worldview into his art. So it's not just sort of, um, it's not sort of boxed into just home, visions of home, but really kind of encompassing the world and then bringing it back to sort of the native vision, right? Yeah, I was very uh, lucky to have seen one of his first pieces. Uh, it was titled The Red Buddha. And uh, when he first showed it to me, um, uh, he uh, was kind of worried. Uh, he didn't know what... He, I guess he never had any criticism for his art. Um, and I loved it. I loved the composition, the color. And I told him, if you could create some more pieces, I would be uh, happy to see it. And uh, he really blew me away with the, the last few pieces I won. Hello, my name is Michael Bailey, and I'm an acoustic artist. So right now I'm doing a series on Shiprock, and it's uh, layers and, I mean, with the images here, I've got three Shiprock, and it's like uh, up to eight layers of wax that you have to fuse every time you lay it down. And uh, the colors that I use are just colors that I've picked up, uh, pig, dry pigment that I make my own wax, my own color wax with. And um, how long have you been working as an artist? All my life. I've been a classic artist. I've been doing a couple of years. Um, so Sylvester was telling me that uh, it's very rare that Native artists work with encaustics. Is that true? Yes. Yes. Um, why did, so why did you choose to work with this medium? I um, was looking at some clips, and I saw this lady doing work with that medium, and I found it fascinating. So I said, I'm going to try that. And so I just started playing with it, you know, did some workshops. So, and I'm just, you know, I'm just still amazed at what it possibilities, you know, that's capable of doing. And on average, when you're making, when you're creating a piece, um, how long, what, how long is the process? Um, usually it takes up to uh, three weeks to a Some longer, I guess, depending some longer, on some shorter. size. This size, this is big. It takes, of course, it takes longer because, you know, having just fusing the piece, the layers, it takes a lot of, it takes a lot of time. is basically, uh, I've been a big fan of contemporary art. Um, I lived in New York. I used to go hang out at Chelsea. Um, to, I went into the ocean and every chance I get to see the new shows. So from my point of view, uh, uh, I really wanted to experiment with color, composition, uh, abstract, uh, art, uh, and um, actually I've been dabbling in glitter, so uh, I'm really excited because um, from my uh, uh, um, from my point of view, I think glitter is sexy and sophisticated and very, very contemporary. And I have to say, it's, it's very unusual. <laughs> you don't usually see glitter, glitter, but I love the usage. I mean, it really makes the pieces pop. And, and you do, a lot of it's very three-dimensional, uh, which I like. I like your, I think your butterfly piece over there. It's very beautiful. And, and then, then you do these really kind of cool, sleek, um, sort of kachina-inspired wood carvings, which are very... Very cool. Let's talk about those a little bit. Well, uh, I wanted to do installation pieces. Uh, I started uh, showing uh, my wood pe uh, panel pieces, which uh, overlap. They're, they're basically masks that overlap, and uh, I played with color and composition. And um, uh, the first one that I did actually was for the Real Ride Museum case training post. And I, I was kind of worried uh, uh, approaching the manager to show it. Uh, because it was a re really unusual piece, it was a large piece, and it was expensive. But So the manager let me show it, and he warned me, like, uh, it, it could take a really long time for, for it to sell. And he basically called me an hour later on my way home and said the piece sold. So from there on, I've just been really pushing myself to do um, more different pieces. Cool. Cool. 